Good afternoon. I am Biko Mani Poto Sok TV. Right now, I'm live from Seattle in the state of Washington, USA. First of all, let me pay homage to the Triple Gem, the Buddha, the Dharma, and Arija Sangha. Again, I would like to pay great respect to three venerable Dhamma speakers who are joining with us today. First, we have uh, Venerable Mangalachoto Sengbuti, who currently resides in what Camera Ram uh, in the state of uh, California. And next to him, Venerable uh, Sadul Sen Sadul uh, Santi Tato. He also resides uh, in the North California. And we also have Venerable Damasiri Sam Janti, who currently resides uh, in the what my Arizona in the state of uh, Arizona. So today we have come up with another very interesting topic entitled the Buddhist concept of peace. So just would like to inform that uh, this program is brought to you by the Cambodian Buddhist Monk Society in the USA, presided over by Priyatimuni Mung Sang, who is the abbot of Wat Muni Sataram in the state of Minnesota, USA. And this program mainly uh, and purposefully aims at propagating the Buddha's teaching in English for those who do not understand my language and for those who use uh, English as their first language. So we would like to um, bring your attention to study and observe on this very specific topic about the Buddhist concept of peace, how Buddhism defines peace, how, uh, what are the factors that constitute to the peace and how Buddhism has played an important role in promoting the Buddhist uh, in promoting the peace of the world. So today, I will, uh, the three Dhamma speakers will be sharing with us uh, their experience, their knowledge uh, based on the Buddha's teaching. So without further ado, I first of all, I would like to uh, welcome and say greeting to all the uh, three speakers. So I would like to uh, give this first opportunity to uh, Venerable uh, Santi Tato from California. Uh, can you... Uh, give the definition of the word peace according to the Buddha's teaching or according to your experience. How do you define peace, Ante? Good evening, Mark Venerable. Um, I think many who are founders of the uh, uh, Cambodian Buddhist Society Monk in USA. And uh, honestly, respects to all most venerable the participants and uh, Venerable Sung Wat Thi, Venerable Sok Thi and Venerable Sem Chan Thi. And uh, I'm honored to be here. And uh, concerning this topic, um, and I want the first, before response to your questions, I want to explain the world. Here, according to the teachings of the Lord Buddha, we have, we have two worlds. And one is internal world, and another is external world. The internal world yet when the Buddha answers to Rohita Sara. This is the, the internal world. And the other one is the external world, the loka. The loka is mean the space or uh, uh, the societies that the human beings they live. The other one is the internal world that is uh, it is the work, it is the uh, the actions of the the mind that everyone um, they they need develop things to bring the peace, and the peace also is come from internal internal developments, not uh, external. And so the world peace here we come back to the peace according to the teachings of the Lord Buddha here. It is the 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 stills of uh, the minds are uh, the mental concomitants. And when the absence, the absence of the unwholesome uh, mental concomitants like uh, hatred, uh, delusions, and violence, and when, when there is the absence of that unwholesome uh, concomitants, and so the state of the peace is come to the internal world. 
is come to the internal world and then uh, we bring the fish to, to our surface and then the fish is come to the world. This is according to the teachings of the Lord Buddha. And reference to the Rohita Sara, who put the question to what the Buddha does too. Uh, he asked the Buddha, uh, is there any place that can walk and he can reach by his own foot? That place there is no suffering, no death, and no hatred. That Rohita Sara asked to the Buddha. And the Buddha answered him, to him is the internal world. Because that world is unable to go by the foot. We have to go by the mental development. That is the, the middle way, like uh, the previous week, the last week, I, I put this question to Venerable Sun Wattis, but not yet got any response. I hope that this week I got response from Venerable Sun Wattis about, about that, that thought, how to, uh, to practice the middle part and to lead to the peace of the world is concerned with other topics too. And this is the, the, the meanings of the peace from the internal world and to external world. Thank, thank, you. You, thank you so much, uh, Pante Sandita for uh, giving the definition as far as I can catch up. Uh, you gave the definition of, uh, you know, the, the stillness of the mind and the mind property, you know, the mind and its uh, mental factors. So this can be uh, referred to the word peace itself. And you also mentioned about the, you know, mental development that is, so to speak, the, uh, the peace uh, come from inside the mind, right? So thank you so much for that. I also would like to hear from Venerable Mangala Joto Sengwati, who is right next to you because your temple are very close to each other. So I would like to hear like, uh, you know, how the Buddha def def define the word peace. So Pante, please. Thank you so much for this question. Actually, there are a lot of definitions about the word peace and we can explain from worldly aspect and religious aspect for normally we have peace according to um, worldly aspect that is when our minds is at ease and we don't crave for anything, especially our minds does not well with the eight certitude, or we call eight willing tamma, eight willing tamma, that is uh, um, happiness and sufferings, gain and loss. Um, criticize and praise these things if the mind of the people not well with it uh, with them it means our mind is peaceful from worldly perspective but in Buddhism I think the word peace is um, refer to the freedoms um, from defilements. For example, if our mind is not free from defilement, yet, our mind is still um, wavering. It's not peace, you know. So the true freedom or true peace come out when our mind is free from defilements. When the mind possesses hatred, great hatred delusions, I think there is no peace in our minds. And as you all said just now, wars start from our minds and peace also can be found only in our minds. We cannot find peace anywhere in the world but in our minds so buddhism focus mainly on our minds to find peace 
and especially we need to um, develop our mind to the maximum maximum level in the practice of meditation to calm down. Otherwise, our mind is still wandering here and there, and sometimes it's overwhelmed by angers and so on, and cause a lot of problems. Actually, I think greed, hatred, and delusion are the root cause of all bad things in the world. Yes. When we have these things, the world is not peace, you know? When we have these two, not these three, like uh, greed, hatred, and delusion. These the three defilements cause a lot of problems in the world. I think war also start from greed, hatred, and delusion. Like uh, Mahatma Kunti, he said that the world has enough, uh, the world has everything enough for too many, but it is not enough even for a person who is greedy. So the word greed is not so good. When the person is greed, he can um, use his um, greedy mind to create a lot of problems, like to create wars against each other, also because of greed. And anger also, when someone have very strong angers, the anger can destroy both himself and other, and his mind is not peaceful. You know, he always try to to find, yeah, you know, like uh, the tactic to attack the person who is his opponent like that. And for delusion, so most of people when they have delusion in their minds, they can do bad things. You know, without knowing the cause and effect for what they are doing. That's why this kind of person needs guidance from religions. Okay? Yeah, thank, thank you so much for giving a very detailed definition uh, of uh, the word peace. Uh, so I just sum up what you talked so far. Uh, so how you define peace is very interesting. You know, you talk about the absence of uh, defilements like greed, hatred, and delusion that can be called uh, peace in, in the concept of Buddhism. Also, uh, you raise about the two aspects of peace, like from uh, world perspective and also religious perspective. Now, I would like to turn to Venerable uh, Sam Jan uh, um, If we talk about peace, we, we may have different categories of peace. Um, you know, we can divide in different ways. So how would you define peace according to Buddhism and how many types of peace are there that the Buddha mentioned? Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Venerable. Uh, many thoughts of TV that letting me join in this program. Uh, actually, I'm just a operator today to have you meet together to talk on show. Um, now the questions come along with peace and two venerable uh, Mangala Juto and uh, Sandi Tattu has already mentioned in, in both worldlings and religious concept about the peace. Now, if we look at the word peace, in English, it means freedom from disturbances. When, when there is no, no disturbances, there is no fight, there is no, um, there is no nothing to, to discuss about uh, fighting or confusing or controversies, this is called peace. I remember uh, one song was written by American soldier after they returned from USS Vietnam US war in 1962. I, I, I don't know the, 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 the titles of that songs, maybe Candle of the Wind 
Kendall on the win or something, I'm, I'm not sure, but there is a stanza say that if there is no war, yeah, imagine there is no war, no fighting, no border, imagine there is no border, so people can gather together and people can travel from place to place. People can go, can do whatever they can to practice, to live with peaceful. To live with peaceful means to live without any harms, without any disturbances, without any worry, without any suffer, without any lamentation, without any unsatisfactoriness. This is called peace, according to that song and according to the, the English word that we, we, we define. And in Buddhism, from very beginning, that you, you, you remember that we talked maybe um, uh, a week ago, we talked about, about triple gems. After the Buddha preached uh, his first sermon, there is Yasa. Yasa means uh, Yasa, the sons of uh, Sujata. Yeah, Sujata come to meet the Buddha at night because, because he, he was so disturbed by worldly things. And he walking direct to the to Isipatana Magadaya Vana <clears throat> and he said it is so not not calm it's so it's so uh, disturbed it is so um uh, how, how, how to say it is not not still full not stay still and not still and it is so confusing and he walked and he saying something and the Buddha said that he is not confusing. He is not disturbance. Please come here and sit. And the Buddha teach him the way not going to disturb the mind. And he realized the truth and become an arahan at that time. So the Buddha at that time just only give him about the vulnerable truth. It is the freeze of suffering. When we free of suffering, there is no, no disturbances. There is a peace. But after that, nine months after Buddha enlightenment, we 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 celebrate Mahapuja. The Buddha all, already mentioned, "Kanti paramang tapo titika." Titika means peace. So titika means peace, but what, uh, how, how, how we define, uh, define the peace? In Nagala Sutta, Nagala Mata and Nagala Pita, who the, the, the famous couple in the Buddha's time, when, when Nagala Pita, very old, very old Brahmin, approached Buddha, and the Buddha said, how are you, something like that, and he said, I'm good, but I'm so disturbed. I'm so disturbed. But the Buddha mentioned that the body can be disturbed by sickness, by old age, but your mind should not be disturbed. And the mind not disturbed is by, by defilement, by craving. So when you control by your, you control your mind and distract your mind, from defilement, from distraction, uh, from grasping, from craving, so your mind will not disturb. It is the Buddha mentioned. And through practice, basically, a uh, basic um, peace, you have to practice by bodily action, by verbal action, and by mental action. So peace here, that I summarize my um, definition: peace, bodily peace, verbal peace, and mind, uh, and 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 mental peace. 
So when we control our body and we control our speech and we control our mind, probably so we gain peace. So peace is a freedom of disturbance from unwholesome through bodily, verbal, and mental action. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Honorable uh, Sam Janti, for uh, giving a summary of the definition of uh, how Buddhism, uh, you know, define the word peace, as you said, the freedom from disturbances, and uh, based on the, you know, the freedom, you know, in terms of uh, physical, verbal, and mental. So it's, it is interesting. Uh, we should also, you know, be aware that. Um, when a person is at peace or when a person become peaceful so what are the ways that you know constitute the person to be at peace to be a peaceful uh, in buddhism as we remember one uh, phrase that nati santi parang sukhang so the buddha also placed an important about the peace there is no other happiness greater than peace but how are we to you know generate peace how peace uh, come into existence, Venerable Sanditato, is there any way to uh, arouse peace? How peace come into existence? Please go ahead. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes, thank you for the question, sir. Um, as sir, you just mentioned now, uh, the absence, the absence state of the mind from the delusions, the craving, and the hatred, and this we define as the peace. This is the internal peace, and so. Um, how to how to make how to make the peace to our minds and and so there must be there must be the ways to develop our minds from that craving according to the teachings of the lord buddha and as um we all know the four sublime teachings of the lord buddha and all uh, the brahma we see the statues of the Brahma with the four face directing to the four, to the four directions, facing to the four directions. So it represents, the Brahma represent the peace to the world. And so the meanings of the four face here, it uh, may be the four sublime teachings. The first one is the, when when one person when one person develop that four teachings and all the peace states of the minds come to that person and so the first one is the, the loving kindness we call mitta in the pali language this is the loving kindness the loving kindness is is able to eliminate the unwholesome state the unwholesome uh, concomitants, the akosalaje tasika, that um, the loving kindness is eliminate the tosa, right? It, it it eliminates the the hatred, the ill will. Tosa, whenever the loving kindness comes to one person, and the tosa uh, is disappear at that time. And so the state of his mind come, come down. It is only one point. We still have another three. We still have another three. And the second one is Karuna. Karuna it is the compassion to, it's through the suffering beings. When we see the being, they confront with the suffering or uh, in the misery, of the ally, and so we we develop compassion to towards that being by uh, develop our physical actions 
the verbal actions. For example, we speak the sweet word. We use the good word for what that person. The one good word is like a medicine to kill those who got the mental ills. So we use our sweet words to comfort those suffering being. We call it compassion. And the third one, the third of the four is mudita. The mudita is, is, is functions to eliminate, to eliminate the jealous. And the more we develop the mudita, the, the sympathies towards those being who God succeeds are in prosperity in their life, as they become the rich, they succeed. We are not jealous to that being. We sense or we say our pleas to rejoin with them, with their success. This is the third state of the mind. We say to them as well as to ourselves. And the fourth one of that is the equanimity. That is very important in one society. As we mentioned, the Brahma, okay, we go through the Brahma have seven daughters. And why we have seven daughters, Brahma? That seven daughter is represent of the seven day, the seven day of a week. So it means that every day is there. It's need every day is need that for sublime teachings to protect the world. Without that for sublime teachings, the world going to be burned. And so that's why the Cambodian people used to say that seven daughters take turns to, to carry the head of the Brahma not to pour down to the world. It means that this world is a netball to sustain. Without the loving kindness, compassion, sympathies, and equanimity. This faulting is really important Ooh. for the human being and for every being, any more to. Without these four teachings, it's going to be the war. Like nowadays in some country, like for example in Burma, we, as we see that, maybe like, like up, that's four teachings. So that's why it takes place, the war is take place. Is it, so uh, that is the, the factors that to be developed to bring the peace to the world. The first time is bring the, the peace to ourselves, the internal world. And the, after that, it's sold to the world, to the local to the communities, to the society. And this is the, the factor according to the teachings of the Lord Buddha. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Pante. Uh, I think I'm very interested about when you talk about like peace start from, you know, individual and then uh, it spread to the, the community and to the world at large. Uh, I remember um, one of the um, slogan, you know, used by our uh, most memorable scholar by the name of Samdak uh, Mahakosananda. As uh, today or yesterday in Cambodia, we, uh, you know, kind of remember the day he passed away for 14 days. He talked about uh, when you make peace with yourself, you make peace with the world, you know, so it, it is so important to start peace with yourself. And especially when the world is, you know, in darkness, when the world is, uh, you know, in, uh, you know, unrest war. So uh, to be at peace, starting from individual perspective is so important so that one can generate, you know, to the larger scale, like community and the world. And Venerable Sinvati, uh, what can you say about that when we talk about the source of peace, where peace comes from and in a country like Burma or in Thailand, you know, the Buddhist, uh, Buddhist country right now uh, are having some, you know, uh, 
unrest, uh, war, or can be a civil, um, you know, dispute or something. How can uh, Buddhism, you know, give the way to generate peace? You know, to give the peaceful solution to the problem that has been arising. I mean, in terms of uh, you know Buddhist perspective, how we how can we build peace when there is war in you know the in uh, throughout the places? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for this question. You hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, you also just now asked the way how to generate peace. I think first uh, we need to um, generate peace through our mental development in the practice in the practice of concentration. And when our mind is concentra concentrated, it means we have uh, peacefulness in our minds, okay? And just now, so when the balls, so then said that um, when we have peace in our cell, we can spread this peace to our community, to our families, and to the world also. And, you know, According to whatever uh, Buddha taught, the main point to generate peace, I think I like uh, when also then just now so mentioned, is the four sublime state, you know, four sublime state, it called Brahma Vihara Tama. If the worlds with this four kind of sublime states, there will be wars. <laughs> like if especially the leader the leader including the parent leader of the children teacher leader of the student and leader of the countries if this kind of leader without um, the four sublime states there will be a lot of problem in his family in his community and under his leadership as well um, that's why I think the four sub sublime state is really uh, the top most uh, to develop peace also, or to keep peace, to, to maintain peace like that. If the leader doesn't have um, loving kindness, compassion, um, appreciated joys, and economies, there will be war against each other. And they create a lot of problems in society as well. So the four sublime state is very important to maintain peace, I think. Um, the teaching of the Buddha is very important. If we um, ask that, why is in Buddhist country also have wars, fightings, unrest? That is a, a size concerned with politics, but Buddhism is, and politics is different, you know. The main purpose of religion of Buddhism is um, to get rid of our mind from greed, hatred, and delusion and to attain peace and happiness. And finally, attain Ibana. But the purpose of politics is to gain power and to, to get uh, dignity, to, to promote high ranks. That's why when they have this idea to compete with each other, they create a lot of problems because um, they lack of uh, contentment, you know. In the politics, they lack of contentment. They never satisfy whatever they have. They try to develop it more and more. They try to develop their cravings higher and higher. That's why it create a lot of problems in society because cravings 
greed and hatred is really the root cause of, of problem in society. So the purpose of Buddhism and the politics is so different, quite different from each other. If we use the teaching of the Buddha in politics, the politics will be very good. But if we use the politics or we put the politics into Buddhism or the teaching of the Buddha, it will be the base or defiles the teaching of the Buddha, not good, you know. It invites a lot of problem to society. That's why I think uh, in politics, it should be used the teaching of the Buddha to, uh, to guide the leaders uh, to know what should be done and what not should be done. And what is a real um, thing that we all want in this human world. Otherwise, there are a lot of problems. And sometimes the problem creates from the minds of the person who is greedy. I think that is the main point also. Greedy is the, the cause to generate um, unrest and wars. That's why we, we need to know that. We need to, to develop our minds to be peaceful and develop our mind to get rid of defilements so that we can uh, control it to be peaceful all the times. And if we control our minds or uh, develop our minds by practicing meditation all the times, the outside defilements such as greed, hatred, and delusion will not have the chance to inflict our minds when the defilements have no chance to inflict our mind, our minds, our mind will be peaceful. When we are peaceful, I think we can use the power of our peacefulness to spread it to other people in the world as well. And Buddhism, you know, Buddhism really um, likes peacefulness and also harmony and also non-violence. Buddhism does not support this violence and this harmony, but they, they try to, to maintain peace and to live in harmony with other people. I think uh, in any country, either they are Buddhist country or non-Buddhist country, when war happened, it is not it is not the fall or the, the offense or the mistake of Buddhism. It is a mistake of um, untrained mind of the person, you know, especially when the leader has not trained his mind to know what is right, to know what is wrong, and to know what is good to be done and not is not uh, it's good not uh, should not be done like that. So um, there will problem in his leadership. Yeah create a lot of problems, sometimes like war, you know, they don't, they don't care about any lives of the people or life of the people or other, other being like that. They just want something to satisfy their desire. And that's why we need to, to train our minds to have morality. When we have high ranks, we have high knowledge, we need to develop our mind to have virtue. Otherwise, it will be dangerous for ourselves and for others and for the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dante. I think it's very uh, interesting. And we talk about the uh, the war and the peace uh, based on the concept of Buddhism. As Buddhism does not any kind of violence, any kind of you know life destruction. Uh, as we see, even in the five precepts, you know, the Buddha first of all place important about the refraining from harming and killing, you know, each other, uh, based on you know uh, the, to obtain something. We have, we should not harm one another. So that's why Buddhism, you know, is the uh, religion that talks very often about peace, how to build peace for individual as well as for the world. But it's as you mentioned, it should start from ourselves and vulnerable. Uh, so then also talk 
about the four ways of uh, you know training the mind in order to accommodate peace like the metta you know loving friendliness loving kindness we have to practice this to each other on a daily basis the compassion very big joy and the mind of equanimity and so when the most also plays some important about the four sublime dharma as well as you know training our mind uh, with morale training uh, meditation and wisdom so that um, you know we can create more peace for ourselves when one is well trained when one's mind is well trained is peaceful only then we can uh, spread peace uh, throughout uh, the places so i would like to turn to wonderful uh, sam Gentil, yeah yes uh wonderful simothy remind about you know um you know buddhism does not any kind does not support any kind of war that happened in the world so it reminded me about um the story of the Golija and the Sakya, uh, who you know, who who have been fighting for some times, and one day the the extreme war uh, was about to happen. So the Buddha knew it gonna cause a lot of destruction of life. So he went there and prevented the war from happening. But I would like to know the method how the Buddha used, you know, in how the Buddha prevented the war, you know, based on that story. So when the balls, uh, Sam Gentil might uh, remember about that. And I would like also to relate about, you know, in that story, uh, uh, we, we may relate with the 10 kinds of uh, Dasa Raja Dhamma, the 10 duties of the king, you know, because in the Buddha's time, uh, there were some kings who ruled the kingdom unjustly, you know, unrighteously. So that's why like when the boss said, um, it's not about just individual, you know, uh, with the mind training or well trained, but uh, you know, it's it is so important when we train our mind. So when we when we get promoted to a higher rank, like we are in charge of the country, in charge of the offices. So being a leader of the community, it is so important to have our mind trained. Otherwise, if it is uh, rooted with evil, with harm, thought. It is so dangerous because we could kill a lot of people, you know, in, in terms of, you know, uh, on terms of our position. So I would like to turn to Venerable uh, Sam Gentil. Uh, maybe you can relate about that, about the story of the Saksha and Golia, how the Buddha prevented the war, or maybe from other suttas as well, please. Thank you for the question. <laughs> yeah. So from, from, our first question that we talk about the definitions of the peace. So we already mentioned that peace generated from one's own action. So when when one's practice loving kindness, like uh, two venerable mentions about the four sublime states of living, Brahma Vihara, and about the the Venerable Moderators explain about Panchasila, the five precepts. It is the, the first the first step that but the first step that we can go further to the peaceful peaceful mind, peaceful country, peaceful um, world. Because it, we imagine that if there is no war, it means if there is no harming to other living beings. So there is also no fighting and no hatred and no jealousy. Also of this thing, the basics that we have to learn. So in Buddhism, if we, we just talk only five precepts, it's very, very basic, very ordinary, uh, teaching of the Buddha that usually simply to everyone, to all living beings. We, we just say about the five precepts. If, if, if living being practice five precepts, there is no war. There is no jealousy. There is no hatred. So it is peaceful if they practice. And Venerable Sadhan mentioned about Myanmar today, it is also because, because they don't practice the five precepts. They don't observe that. If they observe five precepts, abstain from 
taking life to killing any living beings. So there is no harm. Yeah. If he observed, the leader observed the uh, second precept, not to steal any other belonging. They control their desire. It is related to karma, control their desire. So they can also, the country also can be peaceful. But in opposite way, they don't practice. So that's why strike and, and harming and, and peaceful in the country. Like we see today, we're so sorry about, about that. Even the Buddhist country, we consider Myanmar is the very strong practice country. Uh, uh, Buddhism, uh, Buddhist practice country, because Myanmar teach the absolute truth, the Abhidhamma, very well and deep than other country, than other Buddhist country. But they still have that. Why? Because the leader did not practice. The leader still stick with the roots of problem, the roots of fighting, the roots of war. And what are the roots of war? Lobha, it means greed. They still greedy. Those are hatred. They have no compassion. Moha, they still not understand the happiness of their family and their country and the world. They still want to gain without any limitation. The, the power or the, the wealthy something. And related to the war that the families of the Buddha, like uh, Sakya and Kolya, and also related to the uh, Sakya were destroyed by Kosala king. We do the pet that, 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 that we learned about the story. <clears throat> so the Buddha just mentioned first about how to understand oneself. Understand oneself means we have to respect each other. The Buddha started with also, <clears throat> with also to understand oneself and to control their, their action. If they understand oneself, they respect the human being, they respect the, the human right, so they will not fight just only because of water, you know? Sakya and Golia, just only water. Why they fight? Why they fight each other? Just only of water to, for, uh, for, for their battlefield, for their, for their, um, the, uh, for their agriculture. So they fight it. They, they don't know how to share each other. They want just take it and uh, one part control, even though they are family, they are related. So that's why the Buddha said in <clears throat> Atatanda Sutra, the Buddha said, um, Atatanda Payang Janya. It means all of this war, all of this fear generate from oneself. Atatanda, it means fear from oneself. So all of the fear because of one cell with greed, with desire, with <clears throat> hatred and with no respect to, to each other. This is how uh, the Buddha advised. I, I, I don't remember all the stanza, but the Buddha said from Adda Danda Payang Janya, it means <clears throat> the fear derived from one's own action. If one, if one control their mind, their body, they speak properly. According to their story, you, saw, you, you see only water flowing on the borders of that two kingdoms. And they start from, they start from speech. They harass each other. And, and, and the family, the clans, 
of their leader is Sakya and Golia the same. They, they, they come from the same, the same clans. So they harass to each other and then they get angry, they get hate. And then they lost their control. They don't respect any clan. They don't respect any king, even his king or uh, other king, even the Buddha, they don't, they don't respect. So from one cell and from very beginning, body, speak, and, and mind, it's very important that the Buddha said, you have to control your body action, your speak, and your thinking. If you control these four or uh, three things, the peace will, will exist in everywhere. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Pante Damasiri, for uh, contributing some of the ideas from different perspectives uh, based on the Buddhist five precepts. They are very important idea to keep in mind that in order to have peace, um, you know, um, originate or in order to build peace. Uh, Buddhist five precepts is so compulsory, you know, without it, like the first precept is so important. That's why the Buddha placed, uh, you know, the focus on, you know, refraining from harming or killing any other's life. So when you relate to the story uh, of the Golijas between the Sakyas that, um, you know, having the dispute over, you know, over the land of water, so it is important to respect each other. So when we talk about the respect to each other, it's the respect you know, of life. You know, we should respect the life of one another. Suppose if um, we were to fight each other, there are a lot of people who are gonna be killed. And what use is there you know, to, to lose one's life, but just to get water. So you know, if we were to compare about it when the Buddha trying to explain them, you know, uh, you want water or you want life, which one is more important, the life or the water? Yeah, so that I think that's the idea that we should take in mind for, you know, whatever is happening in the world today, like in uh, the concept of some country who have, uh, you know, uh, long unrest uh, war. So when we talk about war, it's not it's not always good. I mean, it's, it's always about something bad. Uh, people uh, hate war. Nobody loves war, you know, because when the war happening, it must destroy something, uh, even not much, at least to kill some people, you know. So it is useless to die, you know, in order to, to get something which uh, not worse to, to the life of people. Suppose when you, when you get what you want, but you lose your life, so what is used in there to, to get something you want and you don't live to, to enjoy that, you know? That's why the Buddha uh, explained about the importance, uh, you know, as we have life rather than getting what we want. So uh, I think this, this is so important um, idea to keep in mind because we are trying to learn something that, uh, you know, that uh, taught in the teaching of Buddhism. So, the, the history is repeated itself, you know, from the Buddha's time 2,100 years back, but uh, the lesson is still the same, right? The world is rotating, repeating again and again, war and peace and war. So we're struggling with the idea uh, war is, is happening. So how can we prevent war? What, you know, what are the constituents to the peace? So again, I would like to turn to Venerable uh, Santi Tato about yeah, Buddhism again, you know, in the name of uh, Buddhism or as we have a lot of teachings that the Buddha taught uh, based on, you know, training oneself physically, verbally and mentally in order to build peace. Uh, can you give any suggestion, you know, how Buddhism has contributed to the peace of the world? So any idea on that, how Buddhism contributed to the peace of the world? Yeah, mute. Thank you for your questions. And first, I want to say is to it's really interesting for Venerable Sun what is concerning with the the Buddhism and uh, the fault. Uh, it said that uh, in some country, even the Buddhist countries, but still have the war. And they said that it starts from the personal, the mental state. So it is not the fault of Buddhism. So it means that 
atahi atano na to ko hina to parosia. And one is one own salvation. There is no any other. So one tries to understand and develop oneself to bring the peace to oneself before saying to others. When he really understand who he is and where he is come from and what he needs, and this is the peace from his own life. And so this peace will come to others too. He know that other people also need the peace like himself. And this is really important. I'm really interested about Venerable Sun Watis about that about that point. Thank you, Venerable Sun Wati. And uh, as from my personal opinion here, I think uh, as a Buddhist monk, um, to prevent the war or uh, to preach that uh, to deal with the war, it is really, it's really for a Buddhist monks to do that. Because as we live um, independently, and we are the examples of the other, so we, we try to um, encourage the people not to commit, not to commit the uh, stealing, um, uh, killing, and explain them about the effect for the next existence. Because some people with the moha, that's venerable uh, sentanti, just explain because of moha, they not believe, not know that where they will go. And so with the moha, they can commit a lot of the bad action, like stealing, killing, sexual misconduct, intoxication. And even if they have the wrong view, they not believe in the next existence. And that is we call the Ocheta Diti in Pali. There is no next existence. And so this is the cause that bring them to the misery world. When one not believe, so they can do everything according to their design. The saints so decide whatever they want, even stealing or taking the life of order, that because of moha, they don't know. And so when they come to the, the mystery world, they have not changed to come back and tell to the people. They have no change to come back. That's they have to serve for a lot on that world. And so as the Buddhist monks, we, we try to explain them clearly about the precept the five precepts, as well as the way to develop. And how we, we are talking about the way to develop and now how to develop it. We, we, I mean that uh, what kinds of the weapons that we use to, to kill all the hatred, to eliminate the hatred, to eliminate the ignorance, to eliminate the illusion. Suppose we want to go to another banks of the ocean, we have to use the boat. But now we, we want to overcome the hatred. We want to overcome the delusions. We want to overcome the ignorance. And so what kinds of the weapons that we use to, to fight with it? As there must be some mental state of the mind maybe. And even there, developing the way to develop. And so, According to the teachings of the, the Lord Buddha, we have, we have the weapons, the most strong weapon is the viriya, the effort. That is the effort, viriya. And um, how, many, how many factors in the viriya? I mean, in the, for the four factor, sangwara, patana, is the, the first factor. Sangwara Patana, the, the first factors that to, to prevent the bad, the unwholesome action to exceed, to, to happen. We use all our effort and to reflect and to develop the loving kindness, not to let the unwholesome state, not to let the unwholesome action happen. 
that is the first the first factor the effort the right effort the buddha said samma viriya it can be it can be regarded as the samma viriya the right effort the effort to prevent the bad things not to happen and the second effort is pahana 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 in pali pahana pahana it means that tries to eliminate the unwholesome action already happened like someone they have the habit of smoking <laughs> or, <laughs> or someone they have the habits of stealing someone they have the habits of uh, misconduct and so we put our strong effort like the weapon the buddha say that the effort is the weapons to kill all that delusion hatred and so our effort to put forward to kill it and so that, that is the second sangwara pathana to prevent or to to take it away the unwholesome action for example yesterday someone they smoke um maybe five cigarette for day and the second day maybe they they smoke one cigarette that is enough and for the next time maybe no need to smoke this is this the way to decrease to prevent pahana sangwara that is the pahana sangwara how how is the third thing and the third factor of the effort the third factor of the effort is there pahana pahana as i remember pahana pahana is me that to accumulate to accumulate the good things that not yet happened and try to push it like to do the charity to practice meditation to cultivate loving kindness and to share compassion to all the beings as well as to ourselves because ourselves really and it's time for for all the people and and at this point i want to explain i want to say that The Buddha also say that nati nati atta samapya. There is no any other person that love ours ever that love us than ourselves. We love ever first. The Lord Buddha mentioned that when we love ourselves, so we know how the other people they love themselves. This is a very important point. So this is the third point of the. right effort sama viriya and the fourth factor how about the fourth factor to maintain we put the the effort to maintain the whole something already happened not to let it go not to let it go for example today when the rebel soon would he have do the good charity and next time when the rebel soon would he going to do more to put more effort to do the nation more that is that is the thing that we have to to maintain is to do it again to maintain the good things not to let it go and thank you this is this is the way from the way to distribute to the, to bring the peace to the society thank you thank you so much i think it was very well put uh, you just mentioned about the right efforts which has four factors four ways in order to uh, two is to uh, you know to protect the unwholesome from arising and also to eliminate the already arisen unwholesome state of the mind and the other two side one is to develop good that has not been uh, developed and the last one is to maintain the good that has already been uh, performed so it's, it's it is also so important in terms of building the peace you know when we want to build peace with the world uh we should first train ourselves you know of course uh, nobody is perfect right we always have the weak point we always have the negative idea and harmful thoughts toward others so it it is so compulsory to start with ourselves first by trying to you know put the right effort in uh refraining ourselves from doing wrong and also to develop the goodness uh, into 
ourselves. So that is one way vulnerable um, something that to put it, you know, how Buddhism contributed to the peace of the world is starting by, you know, uh, developing oneself and with the four kinds of right efforts as taught in um, the teaching of the uh, the noble eightfold path. So now let me turn to Venerable Sun Wati, you know, what is your idea about how Buddhism has uh, contributed to the peace of the world as Buddhism is very well known in terms of, you know, the religion who holds peace uh, very uh, close and um, very popular, you know, in the teachings of the Buddha. It is so well known to the world that Buddhism is a religion of peace. So what kind of, you know, uh, Dharma or message of peace that Buddhism has contributed to the world? Uh, mute and then mute. Okay, I think when we talk about peace, it really related with the word war. So when we talk about peace, we also talk about war, right? But in the Buddha teaching, the Buddha said, hatred is never ceased by hatred, but hatred can be seized only by love. Yeah, the Buddha said like that. When you have hatred, you have anchors, you generate war or trouble in society. And it never ends by hatred, only by love. So if we love each other, there will be peace, you know? So, I think we should love each other to stop the war. That's why in one um, phrase in English language, it say, if the power of love overcome the love of power, the world will have peace. You know, it's like a story um, about wars happen at the Sakya and Kalita clans at the Rohini rivers. One size are greedy than another. They want to occupy the waters much more, much more than other side. That's why they are greedy and they want to get more and more. And at the time the war happened because every one want to get more than each other. And because of that greed, they kill each other. And when the Buddhas come to meet them to solve a problem, the Buddha just asked the question to both sides. The Buddha asked them, is your blood and the waters in Rohini River which one is more valuable than? And that times, both sides of the people rely that, oh, the bloods of both sides of the people are more valuable than the water in the river. When they rely that they stop killing each other, they stop quarrel each other. Yes, the Buddha just raised a question like that. For example, in the same way, if war happens in any country, it starts a lot of problems to arise in that place. So I think war start by beginnings to be greedy about powers, about uh, gains or high rank like that. And when they want that thing too much and they want to win others, they kill those who try to obstruct their wish. And they just want to try to do something to, to get what they want. But actually, whatever we want is not under our control all the time because in the teaching of the Buddha, everything is impermanent. Even though we get something that is very special in our life, but finally 
we need to release it or abandon it. And whatever can follow us only married and demerit after this. So no gain, no high rankings, no fame, uh, importance for us when we face this. So everything is, um, you know, is loose when we come to face with the death. You can lose um, our fame, our high ranks, and our properties, everything. We need to lose, lose it or leave, left it in front of this. So we should know we want to get power. And before we, uh, we, we get power, we try to, to do our best thing to get that power, even though killing, we, we dare to do it. But we should know between the power and the life of the people, which one is more valuable than each other. For example, according to Buddhism, if you kill others in this existence, in next existence, uh, existence, you will be killed by the two because the cost and the uh, of the action can give the the result in the fit way. Okay. Uh, if you kill other, the other people will kill you. If not this life, it will be next life like that. So we should know that uh, we should not love power too much. We should love our country, our peoples. And when war happens, it is not a mistake of religion, as I mentioned earlier. In every country have war, even in Muslim country, Christian country, and Buddhist country, still have war. And wars does not happen because of religion. I think uh, I mentioned that wars happen because of the untrained minds of the people. When their minds are full of greed, hatred, and illusion, surely they will have war or quarrels with other people or with, uh, the, uh, between the country and another country like that. So especially the minds of the leader, you know, when the mind of the leader are overwhelmed by greed, hatred, and illusion, that under his leadership will generate a lot of problem or war and so on because he wants to control everything in only his one own hand not let it go for other that's why our mind is very important we need to train our minds to know what is enough or not enough like that i think war and peace uh, should be uh, balance each other. Don't love to generate war and also we should love to generate peace because when we have peace, we can live each other, uh, live with each other in harmony. We don't kill each other. So I think the value of peace is more important, uh, important than war. Like uh, in uh, one story, and like Chattaka, you know, they were done that and Satata, bring Satata, quarrel is other. Because they were done that, he killed the swan. He shoot, you know, he shoot the swan and then the swan swall down, fall down from the sky. At the time, Prince Satata saw that, oh, this one is shoot with arrow by other. And then he, he came to to pick, to pick the swans, you know? And they would tell us that, no, this swans belong to me because I suit it, it must, uh, my, uh, my swan is not yours. And at the time, Prince Tata said that, oh, it's belong to me because I picked it up. Yeah. So it belong to me, not belong to you. Then they have quarrel between each other, you know, and both the prince, they were the answer that they were brought to justice in front of the um, judicial, right? Uh, in, yes. front of, in front of the judge. 
And when they quarrel each other like this, um, this the devotee say that, oh, this one is belong to me because I'm a suitor. And Prince Dada said that it's belong to me because I cured the wounds of this one. So it should belong to me because I take care of the life of living beings. No one's kill by you to the, the distraction of the life of others, but they should give value to the one who take care of the life of living beings. That's why in Buddhist concept, they give uh, the person who take care of the lives, uh, why killing of the life is the winner, you know? Yeah. But for those who destroy the life of others, it's the loser because um, this two thing is difficult to accept, you know, like uh, um, especially for the one who killing others. Even though he had the power to kill others, but he dislike others to kill himself, you know. <laughs> That's why uh, we should know no one want others to treat badly on us, right? So if we know that we don't want others to treat badly on us, we also should not treat badly on others. And we should take care of each other to avoid killing because both um, our lives and other lives are well, you are both the same, equal each other. Not one life is uh, bad and the other life is good, but it have the same value because life is valuable for all living beings, not just for one side of living beings. I think so. So we should give value to the one who take care of life or to serve someone or to cure someone uh, to have lives more than the one who distract the life of other living beings. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ponte, uh, for sharing a great detail about how uh, Buddhism has com contributed to the peace of the world. So I just want to clarify, you know, uh, the, the audience who just come and watch might get, uh, you know, wondering like uh, the topic is talking about the peace, why the monks keep talking about war and war, you know. I think the this is so related issue. Uh, when we want to build a peace, we must know the root cause of uh, why peace is, is, is important, you know? Why peace is important. Uh, in Buddhism, we can call it a peace only when there is no disturbances, not just in terms of in the mind of people, but also in terms of the, you know, harmonization of the country, of the, uh, of the state, you know? If the state has, uh, you know, unrest, uh, political dispute, unrest, political uh, massacre, so there is no peace. So that is why when we talk about the concept of peace, we must relate with the idea of war because when there is war, there is no peace, right? So war start from the evil, wicked mind, greedy mind, hatred mind, and deluded mind of the people. So peace also must build from the non-hatred, non-greed and non-delusion of the people's mind, right? So we can find the source where, or the root where the war comes from. So also we can, you know, put an end to the war so that we can obtain peace instead. Um, so it reminds me when the world simply talk about, you know, greed, lopa, attachment, desire to gain something, like to gain power, to sustain one's reign and occupation. This is the root cause of the war in the world, you know? So the war in the world started from human greed, just like you raised about the Mahatma Gandhi of India. Uh, his slogan was very popular. He said, um, the world has everything the man's need, but it's not enough even for one man's greed. So it is it's like in the teaching of the Buddha, you know? Uh, lopa attachment when we talk about the you know dependent origination the law of um, cause and effect the padija samupada and also in the samutija sajja arija sajja the root cause of every problem stem from our greed so even 
you know, when greed is much installed, is much deeply rooted in the heart of people, it will follow by hatred because it has been sponsored or crowded by delusion, moha, you know, so moha is like the big boss behind the things and then lopa, of which attached to things like we want this, we want that, uh, so that problems started to arise, like in the case of the Goliya and the Sakya, because they desire, they grave for water, they grave for belongings, they want to own things for themselves. So that's how the hatred started for, between men, you know, between humanity. So it's so it should must uh, it should end, you know, with non-hatred, like we try to develop uh, meta compassion. So I just would like to uh, raise that. Um, um, the, the, the stanza or the verses venerable Singhuti has just mentioned about uh, never by hatred is hatred a peace, but it is a peace by kindness, by love. This is the internal truth. This is the eternal law. Nahi vere na vera ni samantita kutajanang avere na cha samantita esa damo sanantano. So this is from the Yamaka Waka, uh, the verse five of the Dhamma Pata, Dhamma Pata Takata. And so uh, in another Dhamma Pata, uh, verse 223 from the story of Uttara Upasika Watu, you know. So the Buddha expounded about a go te na jine go tang asatung satu na jine. One should win anger through kindness. One should win wickedness through goodness, selfishness through charity, and falsehood through, uh, through truthfulness. So I think this idea is so important to uh, maintain, to build a peace, you know, when we don't put an end to our hatred. Uh, to our falsehood, to our, you know, evil action, so we will not find peace. So again, I would like to turn around to uh, Sam Genti as uh, we are run out of time. So the last question to the last speaker about how the Buddha uh, or how Buddhism has uh, contributed to the peace of the world. So Venerable, what is your idea on that? Thank you for the final question for me. <laughs> I think, um, we discussed for this such a time so uh, our audience can uh, catch our topics about the peace and the war. Um, what I want to share now, just only um, more explain on our speakers about how to um, control our action toward the world world peace. So in, in, in Buddhism, there is one stanza that Buddha said, Atanang Upamangatva. So it is the meaningful that all uh, our, uh, our speakers mentioned in various corners. But Atanang Upamangatva is all is cover that that's that, that speaking. Because when we when we control, when we understand oneself, Atanangupamangatva, we have to understand oneself first. So like Venerable uh, Siddhan said, Atahi it is when when we have one own refuge, we understand oneself. When we understand oneself, that we need peace, we need happiness. So others people also, other beings also have. Have uh, need to uh, need happiness and he uh, need peace. So, but how to control? How to how to control that? So we have to know oneself and we have to control oneself by satisfaction. Some, uh, satisf satisfaction is very important. If we if we we control our mind to enough with what we have to set, to satisfy with, with what we can. We, we limit our creed. So it is the way if we have one house, so we satisfy with our house. If we want more, we have to practice in a long goodness to get one more, not to overcome, uh, sorry, not to over the rule and fight or steal or make a 
bad action or bad thing to to get that house another house so when we certify santo titanang sitan so our satisfaction is very important it the it the highest treasures of our uh, of human being so it is very important so just only we control our grid by satisfaction we understand that and we just take ourselves as example if we if we take ourselves as example so we 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 cannot make harm 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 thing we cannot harm others so by without harming others we bring peace to our own selves and other but other other beings so this is just only simple thing but in buddhism there is many uh, classification from the basic to the ultimate so from basic you just don't kill other you find peace for yourself and for other so if you don't fight if you don't um if you don't uh, uh if you don't take other belonging so you give peaceful and you give wealth to others and also in the world and the buddha does not only say in this world like our speaker mentioned we said our uh, uh we we discuss we tell to other world also so when we do a good thing when we, we practice good thing, you will gain the happiness in other realm other existence and finally the buddha said Sankarupa Samangsukan. We cease all the combination thing, all action, even good action, bad action. So we will gain absolute peace. So when one gain absolute peace, one will never return to make any problem in the world. So this is the Buddha uh, in the Buddha dispensation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Pante Dhamma Siri, for sharing a great contribution. Of course, in the teaching of Buddhism, there are so many Dhamma, so many teachings and aspects that the Buddha give uh, on different occasions to, to different people, you know, that, um, you know, on their personal status, as well as for those who are in the le leadership of the community, you know, to hold the and the, uh, some kind of Dhamma that can, uh, you know, uphold peace. Uh, develop peace and prevent the war. So you also uh, rest about, you know, when we uh, take ourselves as comparison, we love ourselves the most. So do others, that's why we shouldn't harm other living beings, you know, you know, uh, we shouldn't be happy, you know, uh, over the sorrow of others, right? When we want something to grab something, to grab power in our hand by killing the lives of others, so what use is there? What verse is there in, in doing so? So this is kind of reflection that we uh, reflected from the story, uh, Jataka story of the Buddha, that he prevented the war between the kingdom, between the, um, yeah, the classes of people. So he was a social reformist who uh, put the idea, you know, of how the social should, should go, you know, instead of going that way, as it will cause a lot of distraction to, many lives and also to the society of life. So the Buddha was not meant to, you know, play the political game or on the political arena, but he was just paying attention to how, uh, you know, he can build peace for the people uh, because he, uh, he appreciate the value of life, you know, as we have been born as human being. Uh, it is the rarity, one of the rarity, right? Having, having been born as a humanity. So we should, um, appreciate the life we have and be grateful for it and we should develop more goodness instead of doing bad so that's why uh, this is the idea of the topic um, you know the Buddhist concept of peace so I would like to conclude today's program by citing the very popular slogan from Mahatma Gandhi of Cambodia not India so so far we have talked about Mahatma Gandhi of India now we talk about the slogan of uh, Mahatma Kunti of Cambodia, Venerable His Holiness, Tamdak Maha Kosananda, uh, who has been, you know, always my role model, whom I look up to and always appreciate what he has uh, contributed to the peace of the world. So he has a lot of slogans that are very popular, like I have mentioned earlier about 
uh, when you make peace with yourself, you make peace with the world. So it's all, you know, according to the teachings of the Buddha that we should start to build uh, peace from individual level up to the world level. And then another, I would like to conclude with this um, uh, slogan of peace because uh, during that time, uh, most of the country are facing with the war, not just Cambodia, you know, but in many countries in the world that we all as humanity have been through a lot of hardship in the past, the World War I, the World War II, you know, a lot of massacre, killings of millions of lives has happened in the names of humanity. So that's why a lot of theories, a lot of slogan that has been uh, raised by the most popular be human beings on this universe, like uh, Mahatma Kanti of Cambodia, Venerable Mahatma he said that the suffering of Cambodia has been deep. From this suffering comes great compassion. So it is so important. From, from great suffering comes great compassion. Great compassion makes a peaceful heart. A peaceful heart makes a peaceful person. A peaceful person makes a peaceful family. A peaceful family makes a peaceful community. A peaceful community makes a peaceful nation. A peaceful nation makes a peaceful world. May all beings live in happiness and peace. So thank you so much everyone for following and watching our live show uh, until the end. And I also would like to apologize for any unintentional mistake that might happen during our show uh, due to our inability or the lack of knowledge or um, you know, unintentional false. So I would like, uh, before the end, I would like to share the merit uh, arise from our Dhamma Tan contributions of the Dhamma today to the world. Uh, may all beings in the universe live happy, be free from physical harm and mental harm, and may peace prevail on us. May the teachings of the Buddha spread in every corner so that uh, the lives of humanity as well as all beings be free and liberated from suffering. So finally, also again, thank you everybody. Thank you all the three speakers, Venerable Sam Genti Lai from Botkmai, um, Arizona, Venerable Mangala Choto Sengwati Lai from Botkemara Ram, North California, and Venerable uh, Santi Tato uh, Sen Sadul Sadun Lai from uh, North California as well. Thank you for joining and thank you everybody. Uh, thank you so much and goodbye. Goodbye for today.